Okay, for this screencast, we're going to take a look at mind-altering drugs. We're going to describe the effects of lysergic acid, diethylamide, uh, which is commonly known as LSD, mescaline, psilocybin, and tetrahydrocannabinol, which is known as THC, the active ingredient in marijuana. We're going to, um, as usual uh, in this unit, look at the structural similarities and differences between these three. And then finally, look at some arguments for and against the legalization of cannabis. Um, remember, the structures will be available to you in your data booklet, so there is no need to memorize those. So starting off with some questions to keep in mind. One, what is a mind-altering drug? What are the effects of the mind-altering drugs? And again, the structural f features of the drugs. Um, particularly those that are responsible for its effects. Definition, a mind-altering drug is one that changes your mood or your perceptions. So with this definition, some of the previous uh, stimulants that we've looked at would definitely be included in this category. Oops. We're going to look at uh, two broad categories. Uh, the focus of this screencast is going to be on the hallucinogens. Uh, in particular that LSD, psilocybin, mescaline, and the THC. The stimulants discussed uh, previously, cocaine, um, heroin, and ecstasy are again those stimulants um, that would be included since they alter the mood. And we'll look at some of the similarities So what are some of the effects of the hallucinogens? Well, they can cause hallucinations, hence the name, right? Both sound and visual. Um, and these are sounds and uh, visual things that are not really there, okay? And they do this by disrupting how the brain neurotransmitter serotonin works. Okay. And what we're going to do is look for similarities between these drugs and serotonin. How do they take the place of that uh, neurotransmitter? Some other effects, um, and you should notice the similarity between these and the other, some of those stimulants. Insomnia, weight loss or reduction in appetite, a tolerance, and or an addiction to the hallucinogens. Okay, so let's take a look at um, the structure and similarities, um, and we're going to start with LSD. This is produced uh, from the surgic acid, which is found in a particular fungus. It is the most potent of the hallucinogens. Okay. Um, so that's an important thing to note, that it is the most potent. I'm going to have difficulty with my pen. Uh-oh, I don't know what that meant. Okay, um, you'll see here that there is this amid group, okay, and it does need to be identified as an amid. There is the alkene, okay, there is this tertiary amine. And then there's this group here. This is that, that five ring structure with the benzene ring. This is known as a indole group. Okay, and this will be a functional group that we see repeatedly um, in these structures. So take note of those functional groups. Be aware that you would have to be able to identify these functional groups for the IB. That shouldn't be anything that you're surprised about at this point. Now we're going to look at psilocybin, and this is found in a mushroom. Um, so, um, interesting to note, this has a phosphate group on it. Please spell phosphate right. Um, it again has that indole group. Okay. And if you notice here, with this plus charge here, there is an ionic um, portion of this molecule which makes this soluble. And this is an important characteristic um, because it helps with that uh, drug action. 
uh, it being able to be soluble in the body and um, pass that blood brain barrier. This particular ion is known as a Zwitter ion. It's not really important. Just throwing it out there. Okay, moving on to mescaline. This is, has been used for 100 years or more by Native Americans. It's um, similar to amphetamine. Right? If we look at the group responsible, it's really, um, we look at this group. We've got a phenyl ethyl amine. Okay, and this would be similar to those sympathomimetic drugs. So, how do these work? Well, they work by disrupting the action of serotonin. Okay, and these contain the indole ring. If we look at serotonin, there's the ring as well. Um, so, Hopefully, um, you can see the functional group here, indole. Um, so hopefully it's kind of uh, apparent why serotonin would uh, disrupt, or I'm sorry, why um, molecules with this ring would also um, take the place of serotonin. Okay, let's do a structural comparison of LSD with psilocybin serotonin and mescaline. And if you notice, I've got that indole uh, functional group here, here, and here. Okay. Um, this does not have the group, but it has this chain. And if you think about this chain, if that nitrogen were able to move down here, you would have a, a structure um, very similar to that indole structure that is present in the other compounds. This structure here is um, more able to cross that blood-brain barrier. Um, it's more soluble in lipids. It is a larger molecule. Um, this is the only one that is illegal in this comparison. Uh, Psilocybin, it is legal to grow and ingest um, that compound. It is legal to grow and um, ingest mescaline and, and part of that is based on the ability to pass that blood-brain barrier. Okay, With this uh, ionic structure here it would be more soluble uh, and less likely to cross that barrier. Alright, taking a look at THC, the active ingredient in marijuana. You're, you want to identify three key functional groups. These being this alkene, this phenyl group, which is that benzene ring with a hydroxyl group added, and this group here being the ether. So these are the important functional groups to identify, as well as this pentyl group from the end. All right. Okay, so what are the short-term effects of marijuana? Well, it's interesting to note that marijuana can be taken in by chewing, drinking, inhalation, I mean smoking, which is your um, what you see most often in the movies, okay, and by injection. Okay, you do need to know these effects of THC. You have a feeling of mental relaxation and euphoria. You have a enhanced auditory and visual perception. There is a loss of a sense of time, a loss of concentration, and there is an increased a synergistic effect of um, marijuana when used with other depressants, all right? Important to note about THC is there are medical uses for it, and, and again, this is important to remember these. It's used as an anti-nausea, and that's usually or typically used for advanced cancer patients and AIDS patients. 
It is used in a pain management resume, uh, regimen with cancer or arthritis. It is used in the treatment of glaucoma. And it, all of these can be treated with a pill form of THC. So it, it's not like you have to smoke marijuana to get the medicinal effect of it. All right, Legaliz legalization of marijuana, there are some arguments against it and there's arguments for it. Okay, and it is important to know these, these two sets. Um, the arguments against legalizing marijuana is you can de uh, create a dependence on it. Um, it does have cancerous effects, same as uh, nicotine. Um, and by some it is considered a gateway drug. Arguments for legalizing marijuana. So there's no hard evidence as for its role as a gateway drug. So these are contradictory, really. Um, some people would argue that it is no more damaging than tobacco or alcohol. And they argue that it would actually reduce crime by making it legal and forcing it into more controlled situations as opposed to um, the drug industry, illegal drug industry, um, buying it off the street. That ends the unit and actually the content covered for the second year of IB.